Hello friends. So yesterday I posted the video about Blackmagic full frame versus the Pocket 6K Pro crop version, um, comparing the ISO performance. And obviously if some of you viewed the footage, it is pretty shocking. Um, I've done the similar video a while ago when I initially reviewed the full frame, which was maybe a month ago, maybe more, I'm not sure. But anyway, I've done a full in-depth review and I've done a bunch of tests comparing it to Sony. And, you know, it was no surprise that Sony completely smoked the full frame performance and understandably so because the Sony is one of the mirrorless cameras and they have built in internal noise reducers. But when I was looking at the footage, I couldn't help myself but thinking because I had 6K and 6K Pro before, I couldn't help myself but thinking like, I'm sure this is not, or at least it wasn't as bad. I don't remember it being as bad in terms of noise performance as uh, as, the, as the full frame pocket. And uh, I was right, apparently. Yeah, the 6K Pro or uh, the 6K and the G2, they all share the same sensor. And by the looks, it's much better low light performing camera sensor. I don't understand how can this happen? Because if you think about it, full frame camera should have bigger pixel pitch, bigger pixels, gather more light, less noise. But it's not the case with the full frame camera. Um, so it makes me think that potentially there is some cutbacks in terms of electronics inside what I've done. And I wouldn't be even surprised that actually they lost money on the 6K Pro and the 6K and they're kind of trying to recuperate it by cutting down the full frame. But that's just my paranoid brain thinking. It might, might be completely wrong. Anyway, in this video, I want to discuss, go through the video together with you and see how I react and explain a little bit things that are visible in the video that I didn't maybe necessarily explain a lot. And before I get into the methodology of things, I want to kind of explain why I do these tests. I don't do them just because, you know, the popularity of YouTube or whatever the fuck. Um, I'm actually considering to, I'm considering the path, how I'm going to go forward. Am I going towards a Super 35 or am I going towards the full frame? And I'm trying to answer this question in both ways. I'm actually testing the cameras that are both full frame and Super 35, but as well, I'm watching a lot of movies. And to be fair, by now, I haven't seen good enough movies that I would put in a, my top 10 that would rival the movies that are shot on Super 35, which is kind of telling, isn't it? So I have two thoughts. Either one, my brain is conditioned to love the Super 35 so much that the full frame just looks unusual. Or two, is the full frame is so clean that it loses that dreamy effect of the cinema. You know, the, the kind of thing that why we're watching the movies, the, the escape, escapism. But it could be option three, actually, where which is a combination of the both uh, variables I mentioned before, which is that, yes, the sensors are a bit too clean, so they need to be dirtied up. And yes, maybe we haven't seen anything shot so impressive. The one thing that comes to mind that was shot really impressively was the latest Batman. And that was, I believe, full frame. But they were using all kinds of dirty lenses, all kinds of messed up crap to create this organic filmic-like texture that the Super 35 is associated with. So anyway, that's the general wondering, thinking behind all this testing. And in terms of methodology, I shot everything on the Sigma Art 35mm 1.4 lens. I just matched the angle by pulling the 6K Pro a bit further away in order to uh, have the figurine at the same height. Um, in the frame anyway, the proportions. So once I done that and I took it into computer, again, suffice to say, I was a bit shocked because I didn't expect it to be that different. And it's not only the noise that was the problem and the, the amount of it, but rather that the color cast the, the, the chroma noise in the full frame is, is really bad. But let's jump into it and have a look for ourselves. So I've done uh, multiple passes of 
thousand ISO, sixty four hundred ISO, and twenty five thousand six hundred ISO, which represent the top banks of the ISOs that the camera has in the respective gains. So you actually have two gains. So one is starts at about one hundred, and the other one is at one thousand two hundred fifty. I know Black Magic has released this. Um, dynamic range proportion table that everyone seems to be focused on and they believe that 400 ISO and 3200 ISO is your best dynamic range kind of image quality areas. They call it base ISOs, but in reality gain is gain. Anyway, so it's at 1250 and at 100 and then after 6400 the third kind of base where you cannot adjust anything basically what you expose to that iso so it will remain is the highest one that it can go to is 25600 so i actually exposed it to those values just to see what's the absolute worst case scenario and the reason why i do those is to make sure that if i am if i really messed up and this is one of the reasons why you get the raw capable cameras so when in post if you really messed up you can pull some of the detail out and some of the you have some flexibility so this is like really really stretching it i would never push it that far but you never know what situations you'll be might, might be in and it's good to know how the camera will handle certain extreme situations and if we look again at the footage the 6k full frame the tonality of it is just really not as pleasing and it's not the first time i hear this you know i hear from multiple people that when they view the footage shot on 6k or 6k pro it looks very alexa like or alexa mini like where the full frame is just more like panasonic s5 or s5 II. and don't get me wrong they're great cameras in good lighting they're fantastic cameras but we are buying these cameras with the sense of something cinematic something magical right um i just by the looks of it the full frame just initially at least it doesn't have it you i i have to work harder to get to the point and sometimes you know i'm thinking like what's the fucking point getting those cinema cameras if you don't get good image fast and it's one of the reasons why i like red actually it's one of the camera brands that you and airy for this for the same reason you put it in basic CST and boom, you're already at a very, very good starting point where full frame just, I don't know, it just feels like it's probably gonna require me a lot more work to do. But I will do more testing. I will do more comparison between the two. The next ones will be the detail. Actually, what do I have? I have written down somewhere. Uh, Okay, yeah, so next ones will be the detail and the resolution in terms of like, can they resolve equally or is one sharper than the other? And I'll actually be using telephoto scenario, which I suspect the 6K Pro well, again could dominate there, but we'll see. Um, and the other one is slow motion and dynamic range test. I'm not sure how I'm gonna measure the dynamic range yet, but I have a few ideas. I'm actually thinking to maybe build uh, my own dynamic range tester. I'm not paying for the Zylo crap, whatever thing. You can actually make one yourself that would it, uh, show you like really good representation of dynamic range of the camera. So I'm thinking to build my own. And then yeah, the slow motion test. I also want to test slow motion because 6K full frame doesn't have as high of a resolution slow motion as the 6K Pro. 6K Pro can shoot at a 2.8K. Uh, which is very easily upscalable to 4K in post, uh, DCI anyway. So yeah, that's the latest on what I've been up to. I'm still posting every day. Um, we'll see who's gonna lose, me or Boris. Hello, Boris. Anyway, I um, think I'm done. Yeah, I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.